Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church in Fayetteville. Whether you are here with us at or at home, watching at your leisure, we are glad you choose to join us for this service. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, preparing us to receive the gift of the Christ child into our homes and our hearts at Christmas. We welcome you on this journey with us as we lift up joy in our Advent preparation. Are there any announcements? Yes, ma'am. told that the angel trees, uh, your, your gifts are due back next week, and our, uh, our Christmas service, uh, evening service, Christmas Eve service, I should say, is at 4 o'clock uh, on the, what is it? Well, duh. <laughs> Prayer of the day, Heavenly Father, how we bless and thank you for the glad tidings of great joy that were given to all people. Through that angelic host so many years ago, thank you for Jesus and the joy and peace that floods the hearts of all who have believed in him, the rock of their salvation. We invite you here today to join us as we gather in the joy and peace and love. And now we'll have the lighting of our Advent candle. <laughs>
Is that on, Hannah? Oh, okay. Wow, I had this dream last night, and when I woke, I felt like I needed one of those great men and women of faith from the old to help me understand it. In the same way that Joseph helped Pharaoh understand his dream and perceive that there would be seven years of, of seven years of harvest followed by seven years of famine. But there were no rivers and there were no cows. It was just me standing there in the middle of a desert. My fingers were blistered. My skin was hot from the sun. My lips were cracked and I was thirstier than I'd ever been. I wanted to cry, but it was so dry. I just didn't even have any tears. And then I heard a few words whispered on the wind. They made the hair stand up on my arms as a cool breeze swept across my body. I woke up right then because the feeling was so real and so startling. Sitting up in my bed, I think I began to understand what it must have been like for Elijah to hear the voice of God on the mountain after the earthquake and the fire and the wind. The words stuck with me like they were written across the wallpaper of the bedroom. The wrapping paper, the scissors, the tape, all from my last night, late night session of gift wrapping were still laying there on the floor. What were those words that were whispered to me in the dream that so startled me? Drink deeply from the river of my delights. Drink deeply? From where? There wasn't any water in sight. And just as I found myself wishing that I could make a time machine, and travel back to the Egyptian empire as if it was about to rise to prominence so that I could track down Joseph in the middle of his prison and just ask him what it might mean, the answer came to me just like that. The same way the wind blew and startled me in the dream, the gentle voice of the spirit. The desert is where I'm at, where we've come from, what we've been walking through. It's been a tough year. I felt depleted and to be honest, more depleted than I'd like to admit, and possibly more than any other time in my life. I've been, and we've been, through a desert, haven't we? There's been more loneliness, more uncertainty, more confusion and anger, and definitely more fear than some of us has ever even faced. And it hit, a, hit us all at once. Some of us were prepared with sunscreen and a week's worth of supplies, and some of us didn't even bring a hat. And I know, I know, it feels weird to be thinking about deserts and our minds are turning to all things of Christmas, snow, ice, eggnog, and cold. It's weird to be talking about a desert. But you know what feels even stranger? To prepare for this Christmas season. For many of us, it's been a strange, lonely, dry, I mean, can you even smell gravy over Zoom? It's exactly the moment when you need your family the most. And for most or in so many, we may not be able to even give a hug to a loved one, kiss a new sweet baby, sing carols out of tune at the top of our lungs together, or even open gifts together and laugh. Wrapping gifts last night, I was just going through the same motions, pulling out the same decorations, planning the same traditions as every other year, but none of it was with feeling. It hasn't been joyful. It's been, well, kind of dry like the burnt lips in my dream, like the scorched and sandy ground that I was standing on. And yet, that small voice still whispers, drink deeply. Where and from what? It's his spirit, my friends, God's sweet and refreshing spirit. If I've learned anything from this difficult season, it's that you can never have enough. Not enough toilet paper hidden in the closet, not enough canned goods on the pantry shelf, there aren't even enough batteries in the world to get you out of this darkness. My own faith, my own strength, my own habits and traditions, no matter how good they are, they simply weren't enough. And even though I may be in a dry and weary land, there is a river that never runs dry. I had to be reminded, perhaps even warned, in a dream, that from this river I can never get enough. I must run to it. I must go back to his spirit Drink deeply and do it all over again. Today, I'm going to be lighting the candle of Advent as a reminder that even in the desert, God refreshes me. Even in the darkness, his light shines. 
No matter what we feel, by his great mercy, we can find the joy of God again. So let us go to him. Drink deeply.
This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. I am the longest running cast member of the Nativity Ensemble of our church. Well, I don't like to mention it, but I am a formally trained prodigy of the theater arts. Having Dan as part of our cast is fantastic. Lord, I am surely blessed beyond measure. Okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, head, head. Let's, uh, let's just, let's do it again, mm -hmm. but this time with more emotion, okay? Hey, I want you to Meryl Streep this up, okay? You got it. <sighs> Dan thinks he's helping, but all he does is compare everything to Meryl Streep. Tony, I need you to channel your inner Meryl. My dear Mary, stop. It is... Just, I need to Meryl this over for a minute. Oh, this is no way to treat your actors. Meryl would have seen this and walked immediately. Really, Dan? Because this potato salad looks so Meryl right now. Suddenly, the most splendiferous heavenly being appeared to my cohorts and me. Stick to the script, please. Okay, Joel, it's called the glory of Christmas. I think the shepherds deserve a little more poetic language, don't you think? It's the Bible, Dan. God may beg to differ with you. By day, I make a living as an accountant, but a dedicated one. But a dedicated actor must lose themselves and fully become the character. Huh? Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, what's that smell? Green pastures. Green pastures, Annette. I am so method. I haven't bathed in a month. You really need to take a bath. I can't. 
These shepherds were society's misfits, you know. They were, sure, transfixed by um, a, a choir of angels, but also amazed that God had chosen them. They were the scrawny kid in P.E., yeah, yeah. The, uh, the nerd who went alone to the prom, yeah. They were, um, they were the glee club president, twice. They were the least of these. God asked me to be the keeper and the most important message that's ever been kept tell everyone that he sent the greatest gift ever, the Prince of Peace. The lowest in the land is given the highest honor. What's that smell? One important aspect of the glory of Christmas is that it is God's gift for everyone. No matter who you are, where you are from, what you look like, or even what you smell like, the baby Jesus who was born in Bethlehem was the savior of the world intended for all people. God's planned target of salvation through his son is the most glorious gift meant for everybody everywhere. Look again at the clear message the angel of the Lord entrusted to the shepherds that first Christmas night while out in the fields with their sheep. Look, too, is where we find it recorded. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. All means everyone. The glory of Christmas is that God in, God's intention was that nobody gets left out. Every person created in the image of God was is and forever will be a person God desires for Jesus to save. God sent Jesus to be the Savior to be born to rescue everyone. While the shepherds out in the fields were the ones chosen to begin sharing the message that was entrusted to them, God's intentions were for them to be the first among many to receive the good news of Christmas and the glory of who Jesus came to save, everyone. This glorious, inclusive truth is echoed throughout the New Testament. From 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, we hear, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, 
which is the testimony given at the proper time. And then from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And then one of the most familiar scriptures for all of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. From John 3:16 through 18. The line that Dan, our shepherd in the video, delivered at the manger was a poignant one. He said, God asked me to be the keeper of the most important message that's ever been kept. While certainly true and a glorious responsibility, this invitation that started with the shepherds was not meant to end with them. The initial sharing of the story with the shepherds was only the initial link of a global communication chain. In one of the final moments on earth, before Jesus ascended back to the Father in heaven, Jesus gave his disciples an overt commission that has been described as great because of the scope of a people it is intended to be shared with around the world. From Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The phrase all nations, in verse 19, are the words panta ta ethne in the original Greek language. We get the English word ethnicity from the word ethne. This is part of the glory of Christmas. It has always been at the center of God's heart for all ethnicities, all nations, all people all over the world that God so loved and created to come to know and experience salvation from sin through Jesus. Not only are all nations meant to experience the glory of Christmas, but also each person of each nation is meant to in turn be part of that great commission to share this glorious story of salvation with others who have not yet heard it. The story of Jesus as a savior of the whole world was meant for you on its way to someone else. The good news of Jesus was intended to make its way to highways rather than stopping in cul-de-sacs. Highways keep going, cul-de-sacs are dead ends. This story must keep going and going and going until all have had a chance to hear it. This was what Paul was writing about in his second letter to the Corinthian believers. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What this means is that the glorious message of Christmas has been entrusted to first century shepherds, 21st century method actors, 
and every other person who has put his or her faith, hope, and trust in Jesus for salvation. For all who have responded to this message of hope, peace, joy, and love found in the person of Jesus, all now have been entrusted and commissioned as ambassadors of Jesus, compelled by his love to share this glorious story with the whole world. No one should be left out. All are deserving of hearing the good news of Christ in ways that are understandable and clear. As Dan the Shepherd said, God sent the greatest gift ever, the Prince of Peace. The peace we can have with Holy God comes only through the one who embodied it while wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, Jesus. What Jesus came to do through his perfect life, death, and resurrection is what would bring all people peace with God as he dealt with and paid the price for sin for everyone. This is what the glory of Christmas would lead to one day. And this price of peace was so costly because it was intended for everybody. How will you and I respond to the glory of Christmas? And who will be the next person we choose to share such glory with this Christmas? Thank you, Candy, for your message. That was wonderful. Thank you, dear. I'm sorry I upstaged you. <laughs> oh, we will continue on with our Christmas hymn and on page 123, and let's sing It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. 123.
our last song, Joy to the World, on 134. <laughs> Father, thank you that you are our strength and our song. You fill our hearts with joy. May we give our offerings to you with gladness and joy. Everything we have belongs to you, and we rejoice to give some of your abundant gifts back to you. Bless the tithes and offerings we give today. Let the majesty of the Father be the light that guides us. The compassion of the Son be the love that inspires us and the presence of the Spirit be the power that empowers us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Ascending hymn is on page 104. joy. Let joy live in your heart and share the joy of Christ with all you meet. Share joy by seeing the good in each other. Share joy by remembering good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. Pray for our world. In this advanced season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. Thank you all for